Cuttings are one of the easiest way to propagate plants, whether it be figs, pomegranates, grapes, citrus, and today we're gonna to be propagating roses. Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants and author, saving the world with the home garden. Plants that are harder to root by way of cutting include avocados, as well as apples and peaches. But even for those plants, the more advanced way of cloning those particular types of plants could be by way of either grafting as well as air layering. And I'm gonna give examples to those demonstrations in the description below this video. Well, let's get started now by cloning your roses on your property, or if you happen to pass by a rose and you get permission to take a cutting off the rose, I'm gonna share with you 10 helpful tips to accomplish root cutting success. Let's get started. So about a week ago, I was pruning these iceberg roses behind me, and as you can see, they've got beautiful white roses and smaller rose buds. But as you continue down this way, you can see that the roses I did not get to yet still have a lot of brown roses on it. And this is the process of what's called deadheading. Deadheading is a process of removing the wasted dead roses and making sure that the rose energy is going towards producing more rose buds and ultimately more rose color. But as you can see, there's more green than there is white, um, as a lot of the resources are now going towards creating the rose hips, which is the seeding phase of the plant. And we don't want the seeds of these plants. We want some more growth. We want some more buds and ultimately some more white blossoms. Tip number one is selecting growth that is about six months to 12 months old, but not older and not younger. If it's too young, as this growth here is within the last month, it's gonna to be too tender and it's gonna dry out very quickly. If it's too old, if we go back about one to two years of age, it's gonna quickly rot out as well. And it's gonna be harder to root and establish the goal of this root cutting. So let's go into this rose bush and take a cutting out like so. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the most tender growth, being the top part, it happens to be in bloom, but we're still gonna propagate it like so. And now let's prepare this cutting for rooting. Follow me. And so now we've got this cutting, and tip number two is to make sure your cutting is about six to 10 inches in length. And if it's too long, it's also gonna dry out too quickly. And if it's too short, you don't have much of a plant structure to work with. So the goal is to result with at least a few nodes, a couple nodes that are gonna be buried in, a couple of nodes that are gonna be above the ground. And even from there, you can quickly kind of tell where the nodes are because the nodes are at every leaf development. So there's a node here and a node there and a node here and a node there and a node here. So for a total of one, two, three, four, five, six nodes in this about eight inch cutting. Tip number three is to make sure that you're cutting near the node within a quarter of an inch. So here at the bottom, if you take a look, we're within a quarter of inch when we took this off the parent plant, about a quarter of inch away from the node. And this one here was already pruned several weeks ago. And you can see it's already um, begun to harden off. But let's say I wanna make this cutting a little shorter. I just wanna show you by demonstrating another cutting that we're cutting it like so, about a quarter of an inch away from the next node. And if you take a look within the leaf, you can see there's a little bud in there. And the goal is to develop the next row's branches out of these buds that are hidden within these leaf nodes. Tip number four is to score the bottom of the cutting to increase with the moisture absorption as well as increasing the surface area for root development. So when you take a look here, this here is the bottom of our cutting. And what we're gonna do is simply score it like so. And now we've got an area that's gonna increase with moisture absorption as well as root development. Tip number five is adding a rooting powder. And a rooting powder helps stimulate root development, but also equally important is that it helps inhibit and prohibit mildew and mold on that cut surface. If you're looking for a natural way to help inhibit and prevent mildew on those cut surfaces, you can also use honey as well as cinnamon for natural alternatives. What we're gonna do now is remove the leaves that are gonna be buried within the soil medium that we're gonna be demonstrating next. And this node is gonna be under the soil surface. This node is gonna be under the soil surface. And I'm even gonna take this third leaf 
off as well. So that's the three nodes that'll be below the soil medium. And now we're going to be adding the rooting powder like so. And now for the container that we're gonna be planting or cutting in, we're simply adding some drain holes with our scissor here. So you can see that there's drain holes that will allow the moisture to pass like so from the bottom. What we're now gonna do is prepare the soil medium simply by mixing 50% vermiculite with 50% perlite. If you only have one, that's fine. They both have different benefits, which are similar to help stimulate root development. The one thing I do not encourage is using a soil medium that will break down, such as a compost or even using soil as that's gonna further contribute towards mildew and rot at that cutting surface. This here is organic but and natural, but will not break down, resulting in mildew and rot, as would a compost or even using soil from your garden. We've now got our 50-50 perlite vermiculite. I'm now going to mix. So here's our mix, 50% perlite vermiculite mix. And now we're gonna take our cutting and bury it two to three nodes deep. Tip number seven is to water from the top only on the first day. So we're basically wetting the plant like so. The moisture is passing right through, as you can see. What we're gonna do now going forward is we're going to use this as the catch-all for the water in the future. We're gonna keep the water at the bottom five to 10% of the catch-all container. And we're gonna monitor that daily for the next six to eight weeks as we're gonna be watching our cutting eventually push out roots and new growth. And when we add this to the container, as you, and you can see the water level going up, and up and up and this is in fact too high at this point as it's worked its way all the way up the goal is to keep that water line down at this point so what we're going to do now is with the catch-all is we're going to remove some of that excess water and put that back on and now you can see as the water works its way up that moisture is at the bottom five and ten percent and that's gonna help encourage our cutting to push roots to get into that wet zone. And some of the water will naturally wick its way up into the soil medium, which helps absorb moisture, but at the same time, not excessively as would a compost or using native soil from your garden. Tip number eight is to help with the cutting shock. And one of the things that we're gonna do is simply remove some of these excess leaves. So we're gonna remove this leaf over here and we're gonna remove we can remove these three leaves over there. And we're keeping a few of the leaves to help with the processes of photosynthesis in addition to making the proteins and so forth and help encourage root development of this particular cutting. But eventually these leaves will fade as the new growth begins. What we're also gonna do is spray the cutting with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard, protection against damaging summer sunburn insects and rodents. This product helps serves as an anti-transparent, helping the plant better retain moisture within the cutting in addition to reducing transplant shock. So we're gonna simply spray it like so, protecting the stem as well as the leaves. And take a look at our cutting here, and you can see roots developed from our cut surface. Those parts of the branch that have not grown, we're gonna remove. We're basically pruning it one quarter of an inch from that growth. We're going to also prune this branch back and we are going to remove the blossoms which are taking up a lot of the energy and resources from the plant. As in the first year, you should allow the rows to focus more so on root development and growth. And here we are, we're now going to plant it in our Rose bed. We're then going to fertilize the plant with the Ivory Organics All Purpose Fertilizers, which offer your plants all of the six macronutrients plants need, which include nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, as well as secondary macronutrients, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. So the plants have all of the macronutrients that they'll need. And we're simply going to lightly fertilize the plant 
as it newly getting established in its new place. But we want to make sure the plant has everything it needs to succeed. If you've enjoyed this educational lesson brought to you by Every Games, be sure to give us a thumbs up and most importantly, share us with your gardening friends and family. And if you have not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe and hit that push bell notification to stay informed of all of our educational lessons as soon as they become made available. As always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.